Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My nose has been itchy all day. And this, yeah, and what does that mean? Well, I don't know, but also because, you know, there's been all this information about keeping safe and washing your hands. And, and not touching your and face. Not, and and yes. how many times a day we do touch our face. So I am very cognizant of the fact that my nose is very itchy and I cannot touch it, which makes it even more itchy. And I, know. I don't know. Isn't do. that true when you have an itch on your face and you can't touch it and so, it, it gets even worse? <laughs> Does, is that helping at all? Not at all. It's making it worse. <laughs> but I think I've gotten good at not touching my face. Okay. I did yesterday on TV, however, which oh, was not good. No, because I emails I, came in. Well, no, no emails came in, but I did. I did realize that as soon as I did it. But I think I'm pretty good about it now. Like I've gotten used to it, which is sad. Right. But yeah. Well, you got to change your habits. We all have to change our habits. We all do. Well, I know we are all anxiously awaiting what happens tomorrow when Governor Tom Wolf, Wolf reveals his plans on how the state will reopen. We know it's going to be a gradual process, and we know that only some areas are going to go into the yellow, the Phase right. of all of this. Right. Well, there'll be different regions, right. and we'll find out more about that tomorrow. And the other thing we really still don't know about, and it's going to take a while, I think, before we know, is what happens with schools in the fall. I mean, right. obviously, school is is no longer in session in person in Pennsylvania right now. Right. And so, yeah, this is kind of the unknown, and a lot of colleges are starting to think how are they going to handle instructions in the fall. I mean, obviously, they will have that break over the summer to start to think about some things, right. but a lot of unknowns with this. Um, and I wanted to share some. Thing with you today because I attended West Virginia University and a couple weeks ago my professor Gina Dahlia from WVU asked myself and a bunch of alums to participate in singing Country Roads by John Denver. And these are all broadcasting alums. Like yes. these are all people who went into broadcasting. Yes. Okay. And, and this was such a, a vital course in, in my education at WVU because this is the hands on training that I needed right. to get out into right. the field to start my career. And so she said that she wanted to do this not only for the class of 2020, their seniors. Um, who were putting together their final show, but she said also she wanted to do this with former students to raise awareness that reporters are essential employees who are risking their own health to bring updates to the COVID-19 crisis and related no news to viewers. So uh, take a watch. I hear her voice in the morning hour she calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. Driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday, yesterday. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama. <laughs> so, so for the most part, like none of us are really good at singing. <laughs> well, neither are we, and we sing anyway. <laughs> but I think it's really sweet, and I think it, it really does send a nice message. And WVU singing this John Denver song is fantastic. Right. Here's what I want to say, though. Yes. On the record, there's not enough Heather Abraham in this video. Okay, well, Professor Dahlia <laughs> is watching, so you heard it right from David. I just want just a few more lines, I think. Also, this brings up another topic. Does it? I can't what? call her Gina. Can oh, you I call know. Call your former teachers by their first no, name. No, Mr. Alexak so is still Mr. Alexak. Sorry. Yeah, yeah if I you do. if you see somebody on the street, you don't. You're so trained. It's, Even as an adult, you can never say their first name. It almost feels disrespectful. It feels disrespectful. Yeah. Okay, so if you were watching yesterday. Maybe you saw a video of Wonder Woman pop up during the show just out of the blue, and I said we would explain today, so here goes. So earlier this week, it was National Superheroes Day, and, and recently, we were just talking during a commercial break. You had your hair up in a bun. Yes, and it reminded you. It reminded me of the old Wonder Woman TV series. And so I mentioned this to you, and I realized it's another reference, like a 70s or 80s reference that you, you had never seen, and I said you had never seen Wonder Woman, like wow. Linda Carter spinning around as Wonder Woman. So let's take a look at the video so that Heather can see this. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So this was, I think, the best part of the TV series. So she would do this maybe two or three times an episode. Uh -huh. And look how fast that change happens. Little known fact, this is what I do every morning at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> is there an explosion like that yes, whenever you're changing too? <laughs> so Selena has a secret. She's actually Wonder Woman, which we knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she is a Wonder Woman. She is. That's for sure. But we're quite literally, she has done this sort of thing as well. So take a look. This is video for the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> Love of it. course she's Wonder Woman. So that it was superheroes theme night at the, at the PNC, or where, where do they play? PPG Paints Arena. <laughs> Get you, we got to get you up to speed on oh your sports, gosh. David. Oh my gosh, I'm failing the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a lot of fun. And, and speaking of superheroes, Mattel has come out with a, a line of new uh, toys based on heroes, real life heroes, and they wanted to honor you know, the people who on the front lines who are doing the best they can to keep us safe and healthy right now. Um, so we wanted to show you some of the pictures of what they're selling. This, here's what I love. Each one sells for $20, mm -hmm. and $15 from each sale is being donated to an organization called First Responders First. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I also, I love who they included, because it's, yeah. I mean, doctors and nurses and EMTs, of course, but also grocery store workers, right. delivery truck drivers. You think about all the people that keep our society going right now, mm -hmm. and they are truly essential workers. And, and also, little kids can now view these people in the way that we all now view them. It's, it's, it's very obvious that they are superheroes in our lives, and they're saving people's lives. And little kids can, can play with action figures and, yeah. and pretend they're them. You know, I think that's great. We have received so many emails from people saying, hey, don't forget this person. Don't forget yeah. that person. It's true. Uh, you know, the clerks working at gas stations because gas stations have to remain open. Mm -hmm. We have heard from so many of you and we've heard you and we agree. All essential workers, if you are working right now and you are keeping us going, we thank you. We absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there's this guy in Maine sticking with the superhero theme for just a little bit longer. So there's a guy Where's in Maine. Cape, David? <laughs> I know we need the cape. <laughs> um, anyhow, he lost a bet. Uh -huh. And here's what happened. Well, I shouldn't have better. <laughs> so here I am. Jamie was right. I was wrong. And now I'm wearing this costume. Uh-huh. Wait. <laughs> I that... love that it is on the sign. Jamie was right. I, I was, was wrong. wrong. So here's the bet behind that. That's Jason Clark and his wife bet that their general store's Facebook page uh, would reach 5,000 likes in a few days. He didn't think that would, was possible. Yep. Well, clearly they got the likes and as part of the bet, he had to dress up as He-Man to deliver orders. It's so that's incredible. Yeah. I almost want to make a bet with you. Just what? to you just know. to see if uh, do you still have that Superman costume? I think I lost it. <laughs> what do you guys now. think at home? I think we should make a bet. All right, we'll talk about that during the commercial break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, this next story is going to make us smile. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a three-year-old pit bull up for adoption at the Humane Animal Rescue in Homewood. His name is Gaston. And the, really, the description that they wrote up for Gaston <laughs> is so good. So we just, it was a worker there at the rescue that wrote this. So we're going to read just a little of it to you. Uh, no one's fun like Gaston. Likes to run like Gaston. Loves scratches on top of his bum like Gaston. He's big and he's cute and he's burly. He's He'd love nothing more than a toy. I'm trying to think of the song. I'm trying to sing it. I can't oh, do it. it. <laughs> Always peppy and never once surly because he's just such a wonderful boy. No one eats like Gaston, munches treats like Gaston, wiggles from nose to his feet like Gaston. You know this, right? Gosh, no, it disturbs me to no, see you, Gaston, know. looking so down in the dumps. See, I didn't know it was set to the I music. I just thought it was a poem. I, I don't know. But anyhow, that's who they're referencing from Beauty and the Beast, Gaston, right? He's a cutie. Yeah. And anyway, it winds up the thing ends. What a guy that Gaston. And so the rescue, they called me last night, said he is still up for adoption. Uh, he's three years old. They told me he loves to cuddle. He doesn't like cats. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we learned. <laughs>
at the East End <laughs> location, right. and uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to report some good news on Gaston very soon. Well, we have said, you know, this is a great time if, if you have room in your home and love in your heart to adopt. This is a perfect time because so many people are home right now, and today right. just happens to be National Adopt-A-Shelter Pet Day. Yeah. Perfect timing. It is perfect timing. All right, there's another animal we want to show you. Not a dog. Uh, his name is Peter Rabbit, but he's not a rabbit either. Take a look <laughs> at this video. Uh, this is a baby monkey. The a, cutest one ever. He was born at the zoo in Houston. He was born Easter weekend, which is why they named him Peter Rabbit. Oh my yeah. gosh. Look I at those eyes. I want to hold him. I know. He's being hand raised by the zookeepers. Look at his those eyebrows. Just his little expressions. He was he was too weak to hold on to his mom. Aww. So in fact, he uh, they said that he had a fractured skull. But they say that he's perfectly healthy right now, uh, and they're just watching him closely, and they hope to reunite him with his mom soon. But just that video I'll doesn't that just mom. melt your heart? I want to hold him. He is so <laughs> cute. All right. Well, we want to let you know tomorrow is Friday. In case you're wondering what day of the week it is, today is Thursday, <laughs> and that means tomorrow is Friday. We do need a reminder nowadays. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So tomorrow is our Friday free for all. And this is when we will take questions from you and we'll try and answer as many as we can. Yeah, we always love the questions, so we appreciate it. All right, well, coming up, we are talking with some big TV stars. That's right. I talk with the amazing young man who plays young Sheldon, and you will not believe how busy he is when not on the set of that hit show. He tells us how he's spending his time at home. And I will talk with Donnie Wahlberg of Blue Bloods and, and also New Kids on the Block. I told him you said hi, Heather. Uh -huh. And Wahlbergers, he's from that too. He's very busy. Both actors tell us their season finales didn't go as planned because of the pandemic, but see how they worked it out anyway. That is coming up. Plus, we're thinking ahead to the weekend and excited to announce the return of Liberty Magic. Yay! And other happenings too. Sean Collier is our virtual PTL weekend guide, and we'll hear from him next. And also on the virtual front, how some volunteers are lending a hand from home. We'll show you how that works. And we're talking about the best workout times and the best meal kits to order online. It's all ahead when PTL comes right back on this last day of April 2020.